Professional football in America is a special game, a unique game. Played nowhere else on earth, it is a rare game. The men who play it make it so. Jack Youngblood, defensive end. If there could be a logo for tough man of the NFL, it's Jack Youngblood. First of all, listen to the name. Jack Youngblood. Jack Youngblood. Jack Youngblood. Jack Youngblood. Number 85, Jack Youngblood was outstanding. He would be the man if he played now. But in his day, Jack Youngblood was called a stud. Harkonnen gives to Foreman. Jack Youngblood. Before he gets back to the line of scrimmage, Youngblood makes the tackle. I felt as though I, I had, a, had a balance to, to the game. Oh. Think he's hungry? Harkonnen drops. Fred Dreyer from behind. Fumble. And the Rams have it. Jack Youngblood to the 10. Jack Youngblood is the Marlboro man. He will just whip your ass by looking at you. He epitomized um, the tough football player. And the guy you see holding the helmet, you know, with the mud all over him, you know. If you want to be in the trenches with somebody, you want to be in the trenches with Jack Youngblood. He played muddy and bloody. We have blood in the game. I always kind of thought of Jack and John Wayne as the same, that old swagger, you know, how you doing, Eric? You know, Jack Youngblood. You just knew that John Wayne was going to get the bad guy. You just knew Jack was going to muscle his way into the backfield, sack a quarterback, and make a play that really was a difference in the game. He did it every single week. 25, 40, 35, 30, Jack Youngblood, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! He was the John Wayne of pro football, Hollywood handsome, cowboy tough. When it was time to man up, nobody was as tough as this guy. The John Wayne of football, Jack Youngblood. Spin it all either stomping other men or, in some cases, getting stomped. Los Angeles in the 1970s was the wrong city and the wrong decade for a backward young man from a backwater town in Florida. This psychedelic city of freeways, free spirits, and free love was a bad trip for Jack Youngblood. When I came to Los Angeles, it was, it was a horrifying experience. I was supposed to stay for like three days. I jumped on the plane after the second day, left, could not stand this place, was totally petrified. I'd never seen that, you know, that many people in my entire life. 61. But the scariest thing was how easily the rookie defensive end was flattened. He made uncountable mistakes until pass rushing became as simple as one, two, three. That young blood kept the pressure on. Jack Youngblood, number 85, in only his third year made the Pro Bowl and put on an outside rush, quick, all-encompassing, and impossible to escape. Jack Youngblood, Mike Fanning, Larry Brooks, and Fred Dryer. We have to stop the run, but we do it rushing the passer. Third down and four for Lomax. Looks to go on top. He's in trouble, and Lomax is going to run, and he's down. It was a privilege to be able to, to play on that football team. Isolated action of Yerry trying to get an angle on Youngblood and getting nothing of number 85. Speed, quickness, and finesse. Knowing your game, knowing what to do to instantaneously be able to react to what a larger man's going to do to you. A lot of people never knew how light Jack was.
was towards the end of a football season. Uh, if you played against Jack in December, he was down to 237 pounds. And here's a guy that played every down. We're not talking about one of these designated guys. We're talking about a guy that would stand in there and take on an offensive tackle. Jack Youngblood is one of the greatest people I've ever known to have on your ball club when things are going bad because he will pick you back up. He'll turn you around and won't let your players get down. Although he was a man of action, his bark was as bad as his bite. Jack talks all football game. I mean, the guy never shuts up. And he he goes into this falsetto voice when he gets excited. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it would break glass. Jimmy Hart uh, was our quarterback. It was my job to protect Jimmy. And all game long, whenever I'm blocking Jack, Jack would be going, Jimmy, 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 here I come, Jimmy. Jimmy Hart was trying to check the ball down to Otis, and I, uh, I tipped the ball, catch it, and we're running toward the, the tunnel end of, of the Coliseum. I remember going through my mind, if Jimmy Hart or Dan Deardorff catch me, I'll never hear the end of this. <laughs> The game came down to the final seconds when Jack Youngblood saved the upset with a blocked field goal on the final snap. Youngblood's clutch play, along with his trio of sacks, ended the Cardinal win streak and prompted John Robinson to call the 14-year veteran defensive end the best football player he's ever been around. Inspired by the presence of Captain Jack Youngblood, playing in pain with his broken leg. He played in 1979 playoffs with a fractured fibula. The season of 79 began amid the sweat and strain of summer camp. Well, to consider that Jack Youngblood played throughout the playoffs in the Super Bowl with a broken leg, you either have to say he's the gutsiest player of all time or the craziest. And I know he isn't the craziest, so he's the gutsiest. Even today. You see him at the Hall of Fame. He does look like he could suit up and kick your ass. Well, I'm not going to argue with Jack. <laughs> Let's start naming football players who have played in Super Bowls, played in championship games with broken legs. Humble and almost picked off by Youngblood. I would imagine it's a very short list. Jack Youngblood's path to the top of our countdown began in Dallas in the 1979 NFC Divisional Playoffs. In a playoff game at Texas Stadium, Youngblood's right leg was caught in a cowboy vice and snapped. Hurt. It was swollen, and you could feel the knot. You could feel where the leg had been broken. The doctors are all looking at it, and they're feeling it, and they're going, no, 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 you can't do this. I said, tape the thing up, and we'll worry about it when the game's over. Win, lose, or draw, then that's the time to worry about it. You can't worry about it now. I can still walk on it and still run. Tape it up. Give me two more aspirin, and let's go play. It can't hurt in just a little while. You can't do any more damage to it. I mean, you can't break it any more than it's already broken. So, why not? Jesus Christ. The guard picked me up, flipped me over, and the fibula snapped just above the ankle. And you can tell young Biden is hurting. Trainers come out. We go to the locker room, and I said, you need to tape this thing up. He goes, I'm not going to do that. I said, you're going to do this. He gets the pictures back about that time. He says, see here, it's broke. I go, well, I understand that. I said, tape it up. Starbuck with Preston Pearson, the blocking back. Roger with a little time, spaces. Jack Youngblood on a bad ankle brings him down. Youngblood returned, and with him came victory. He was not going to be taken out of the game. That was just not Jack. I thought it was my responsibility as the captain of the team. You didn't have an opportunity to play in playoffs that many times. Let's go and take advantage of it. In the biggest single upset of the season, the Rams stunned the Cowboys and won a weekend in Tampa Bay for the championship. They're all saying that you won't be ready to play, and you shouldn't play anymore. 
Why? I guarantee you, I'll be ready to play. In pro football, playing with pain is a big part of the game. ID, 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 pain tough. The former L.A. Ram defensive end Jack Youngblood went well beyond the call of duty. Now that's a tough guy. The Rams appeared in the NFC Championship game. For the first time, they won it. Inspired by the presence of Captain Jack Youngblood, playing in pain with his broken leg. Anybody that's ever had a sprain on their leg knows how much it hurts to walk, to stand, to basically just sit. And here was Jack with a crack in his leg, and he went out and played. That's the way to get it down there. We've had players play with serious injuries before, but to play at that level... Jack Youngblood made this time. Though not a dominant force, the defense made its presence felt. They were 11 men led by one great player. That's been the motto and the, and, the, and the focus of our defense all year long. 11 people going to the football all the time, no matter where it is on the field. The next week, number 85 was knocked down. But it was the Buccaneers who were knocked out of the NFC Championship. He played his third game on a broken leg in the Super Bowl. It was my responsibility to be an inspirational player, play by example. Even in defeat, he played with the style that made him a star and the toughness that made him a hero. I don't consider myself tough. I, think I consider myself a nut sometimes <laughs> for some of the things that I did. If I could have done anything any different, it would be that I would still be able to play. I loved it. It was so thrilling that I didn't want to miss one minute of it. But let's get let's get serious. It was a non weight bearing bone, Jack. You've been milking this for a long time. I'll give you a lot of credit for that. Dan, give me a break. You cannot call Jack Youngblood a wimp. There are some urban legends out there. Uh, I don't think that's one of them because I've talked to people that were around Youngblood. They all believe how seriously he was hurt. How is Jack Youngblood played on what we know is a fractured lower ankle bone? I don't understand that. Joe Theismann, now he had a broken leg. The bone was sticking out. What he had was a hairline fracture where the bone was cracked. You can tape that and play with that. It being public, I don't know that I would have made the same decision. You can imagine guys taking shots at your leg. That's just part of the game. You're putting yourself directly in harm's way. I thought he's going to stay down and he won't do it and that does take a lot of bravery and a little insanity he must have had a super high tolerance for pain or just a total lack of brains to me it's it's just sick number 85 jack youngblood i just saw that and went i'm not surprised won the red badge of courage for enduring more than his share of pain on this battlefield i thought i'd been bitten by a spider and i just had some swelling in the arm the third day comes along and it's getting rather bothersome a nuisance. Couldn't bend my fingers. Couldn't put my couldn't put my watch on. Things like that. There were indications that something might not be quite right. So I so I go in. The trainer looks at it. He almost faints. So at that, I'm saying to myself, something is bad wrong here. He jumps on the phone. They call the doctors. One thing leads to another. I'm in the hospital that evening in uh, emergency surgery, and they open me up and pull out this foot long hot dog. You know, it seems as if he hurts all week, but he, he shows up on Sunday and plays the best game that he's played that year. And that's the inspiration to the younger guys. It drives me. I have not lost that the desire to play and to play well. Can you go again? I'm ready to roll now. After the divisional round, the NFC title game, and the Super Bowl, Jack Youngblood started in the Pro Bowl to cap off the number one gutsiest performance of all time. Every year, 50 guys bail on the Pro Bowl. Oh! Oh, my left pinky finger so sore. For him to go there and play with the crack in the fibula. Wow. Uh, mind blown. That's what it's all about. Under a lot of pain coming out and playing this game.
winner of numerous awards and loved by the fans, the All-Pro was the Defensive Player of the Year in the NFC. The man with thick pipes for arms played in 201 consecutive games, made 17 playoff starts, recorded eight and a half sacks in postseason play, and two career safeties. Those digits are all Ram records. And How did I play 201 consecutive games? Youngblood played well and often. His 201 consecutive games make him the most durable defensive player in Ram history. Despite extra attention, he has been named All-Pro seven times, Player of the Year twice, and his never-say-die style will surely elect him to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Defensive Player of the Year twice, and named to the NFL's 1970 All-Decade Team. We're the old folks. We are the, the Rams' legacy. It's a little different being here. I feel like I'm an old man now. It's always nice to, to be recognized and, and that we are the alumni of the current football team. Just thinking about that you've been elected, you 200 and 260 some of us that have ever been elected to this, that have ever played the game. That Canton thing's pretty special. <laughs> it's pretty special. I feel like I've been blessed with, with those kind of recognitions. And the tough guy from Florida was inducted into the hall in 2001. Now that's a legend. You do the one and you're living. You do the other and you may be walking around, but you're dead as a beaver hat.